Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for coming back and um, to get right to the point in this episode I'm going to be talking about religions and beliefs. Uh, but before you click off right away, just give me a second to just summarise quickly what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about how there's so many similarities between the Abrahamic faiths, which uh, consist of Judaism, uh, Christianity and Islam. In fact, there's much more difference, uh, much more similarities than there is differences. And I'm going to share that with you here. And then go um, going forward, I'm going to make an argument that I think it would be better to just take all of them in one religion, if you like, to take them as an Abrahamic faith, because they all uh, come from Abraham, uh, ultimately, according to the books, and to take them all together. And then you've got the benefits of each and every one. So to begin with, I'm going to start with uh, from this present moment and work my way back uh, through the, the texts, if you like, and through the, uh, the history of the religions, sharing some of their similarities and some of this stuff you, you probably won't know. If you, if you get your religious education from the media, then a lot of these things you're not going to know. Many of them surprised me a great deal when I, um, when I was investigating and looking into Islam and Christianity uh, particularly because I could see that Islam was having such uh, an impact in the world at large. I thought, what's this all about? Let me, uh, let me have a look, do a bit of digging and investigating. So the first point that I'm going to make, uh, I've, I've got a few religious books here actually to keep me company and they're all to do with the, uh, the Abrahamic faiths. So ultimately, um, if we go back in time, we come to uh, Prophet Muhammad. He is um, the founder of Islam, if you like. He received the Quran from uh, Allah and he noted it down. And that's how we get um, Islam. Islam means to surrender. And Muslims will try and um, emulate the Prophet Muhammad in the best way that they can. So in Islam, you have the book, the Quran. You have the hadiths and you have the way the prophet lived and people try and emulate that. And so what you might be surprised to learn is that in Islam, although they have Prophet Muhammad and he's the crowning uh, prophet of, their, of the Abrahamic faiths, in Islam they recognise Jesus, they recognise Mary and they recognise all of the prophets of the Torah, of the, the Old Testament, the Jewish Torah. So they will recognise Abraham, Moses, Noah and um, all of the prophets. They recognise and accept that they're prophets from God. So if you didn't know that, that's, that's the first major point, I suppose, is the fact that in Islam, they literally have to believe in the same prophets that the Christians have to believe in and that the... Um, the Jews have to believe in. And so if we go back uh, another about 450 years, 500 years to uh, Jesus. Jesus was ultimately a Jew. He grew up in Jerusalem, uh, the home of uh, Judaism. And he was almost similar to Buddha, a sort of reformist, you know. He could see all of the codes and the ethics that come from like Deuteronomy and Numbers, the early Old Testament books. And he, in a sense, like, uh, I don't know, simplified or took the essential um, doctrines of Judaism and made it much more freely available to people. And that's why he had such a, a massive impact, because it's difficult to, to be a Muslim and pray five times a day and to keep everything clean and to fast at Ramadan. It takes a lot of uh, effort and, you know, additional effort that life sometimes can zap away from us. So, again, Christianity and Jesus, uh, if you read the Bible, the Bible will contain a New Testament and an Old Testament. So, the Old Testament is the Jewish Torah in English. So, ultimately, Christianity hold true to the New Testament, which are the Gospels of Jesus and the letters of St. Paul, and all of the Old Testament. So, they believe, too, in Noah, Abraham... Adam and Eve and, and all the stories that you find in the Old Testament. So this is where it starts to get a bit interesting and squirrely. Both Christians and Muslims 
believe in all of the prophets of the Old Testament. So you might be thinking, well, hold on. No, they don't. Da, da, da. But if you read the books and do a bit of study, you, you'll see that, yes, both of them accept that all of the Old uh, Testament prophets were connected to God in some way and revealed his teachings in their own time. And so where it, the difference comes is that Christians don't believe in Prophet Muhammad and Muslims don't believe that Jesus was the son of God. They just believe that he was one of a line of prophets similar to the those of the Old Testament. So in a sense, for me, like I'm arguing, there's less difference there than there is similarity. Or did I say that right? There's more similarities than there are differences. Yeah. And so now you go back to the Old Testament, the Jews and the Torah, and they believe that um, God created the world and then Moses brought the Ten Commandments and then Noah saved us and uh, civilization and humanity and the animals from the flood and then Abraham and on and on and on uh, through the Old Testament up to, um, I think, Revelations is the final one to tell in of what one that's coming the, uh, the the second coming, which the Christians say is uh, Jesus Christ, and the Muslims say is Prophet Muhammad. So, this is a bit of a, a, a very simple uh, history of the Abrahamic faiths, and the fact that they all recognise, um, Muslims recognise all of them from Prophet Muhammad back to Adam, Christians believe from Prophet Jesus or Jesus Christ, Son of God, if you're a Christian, all the way back to the creation of the um, the heavens and earth. And Jews believe all of the Old Testament prophets back to the beginning. And in a sense, they all believe, all of these uh, Abrahamic faiths believe that God created uh, the universe. In a sense, he created the heavens and the earth. And he is, uh, Aristotle would call him the unmoved mover. Plato would call him um, God uh, the one, if he was talking in more like a mathematical sense. And he'd call it the good, if he was talking in um, like um, virtuous and uh, ethical uh, parlance, he'd be talking like that. So... I don't know, it's just when I was researching these things, it would blow my mind regularly that the Christians and the Jews share identical beliefs about the beginning of creation. And they both share the Genesis uh, myth that God, uh, you know, in the beginning there was nothing and God created the heavens and the earth and then he, he looked and said it was good. So both Christians and Jews believe that and essentially Muslims believe uh, the same story but it's just worded very differently in the Quran. It's ultimately it's the same thing Allah created, but it's different. If you read the, the creation myth in the Quran, it's very different from Genesis. But is it so different? I'm not sure. God created the earth and put everything in place. And so, if you like, that's a very uh, summary history of the religions and if you belong to those religions and you think I've done a, a disservice then I'm sorry I'm trying to share them as one um, one whole and talk about all, all of the similarities that they share for me and how I can happily read any of the books and talk to any of the practitioners and um, be happy doing that and not have to hold true to one doctrine and so I'm going to come back to the present and talk about um, uh, the modern saints so all of these if you go back to uh, prophet muhammad and before um there's only so many prophets uh, christians say after jesus there's no more prophets muslims say after muhammad there's no more prophets so for the christians and the muslims prophets cut off with with their prophet if you like there's no more because ours is the last one but they both share a um a belief in saints so in Christianity they would call them like saints or holy men and in uh, Islam they'd be called the uh, the sheikhs the imams uh, and ultimately more holy men so but the very interesting thing is if you hold true to one um, one doctrine one religion 
if you label yourself a, a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim, you narrow down your uh, well of saints and sages and sheikhs and imams. And I was having a conversation on this course I was on and the man shared this teaching with me that every century Allah will send a, a, a sage, a sheikh, an imam and ultimately at the very beginning when Islam broke off into all its sects and Christianity also went through the Reformation and Martin Luther created um, Protestantism uh, separate from Catholicism. Ultimately, all these great um, heroes of the different religions take it in a new direction or specify that we should emphasize this more than that and we shouldn't talk to them over there because they don't uh, pray like we do. And so it was interesting that I was having this uh, this little debate or conversation with this Muslim and he was sharing about all of the, the sheikhs, the imams, the holy men that um, almost pushed the religion forward. And I made the argument to him that in a way, by not being a Muslim or a Christian or a Jew, I benefit a great deal because this man believes in all of the Muslim saints and sages and sheikhs and imams. But he doesn't believe in the Christian ones. So for him, St. Thomas uh, Aquinas, uh, St. Paul, um, St. Augustine, and all of the saints back to Jesus, they don't recognize them. They say, there's no Jewish, uh, sorry, there's no Christian saints, only the Muslim saints. And I'm sure that the Jews would say the same thing. There's no Christian saints or Muslim saints, only the Jewish um I slipped my mind. What's the Jewish? Tell me, what's the Jewish? Um, I'll Google it. Wow, so you learn everything new every day. No wonder I couldn't recall it because I didn't know it. I've never heard the term before. A Kohen, uh, supposedly, according to Google and Wikipedia, that's what the term for a Jewish priest is, a Kohen. So I didn't know that, which is why I couldn't recall it. So my point is, to try and finish this in some sort of uh, systematic way is that by not calling myself a Muslim, a Christian or a Jew, I almost multiply the holy men that I can recognize and get uh, motivation and inspiration from. I multiply it 3x. So if you're a Muslim, you just got one. If you're a Christian, you just got one body of uh, heroes and if you're a Jew you got one but because I'm not any of those things I've got three three wealths and wells of these uh, holy men that I can read draw from and move closer to my maker if you like by doing that so yeah I'm not sure how this is going to come if it's going to interest you if I'm going to be repeating myself a great deal but I was just inspired to share this and I've not talked about religion before um, and yeah, I, I don't know if you guys are interested and want to learn uh, more or know more about something I've said or elaborate on this and that or say, no, no, if you're if you're a religious person and you want to say, oh, no, no, and put your uh, your view, your belief across, then I'll, I'll read it and maybe I'll I'll come back if you like. But yeah, I, I'm happy that I'm in a position to to share that with you, my understanding my beliefs and my view of the Abrahamic faiths. Ultimately, if the Jew and the Muslim and the Christian are all in holy fervor during their prayer, for me, it's the same God that is looking after them all and bringing them that inspiration. But maybe start talking about God in, uh, in another episode because uh, there's no time for that in this one. So thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe to the channel because I've got a, a mental health crisis vlog coming next. It was good to be with you. I'll see you soon.